snow Tuesday. I'm going to be honest with you. You can be mad at me if you want, but I don't have anything to do with it. I prayed. You know, it's about time for the 1982 blizzard again. Remember that one? Thunder snow? 22 feet of snow? About time. It's just saying it's about time. 22? I thought I said two feet of snow. Did I say 22 feet? Why not? Why not? You had Ryan? Yeah? She stuck out in a cabin in the middle of the forest with... <laughs> so you f you fell while you were holding Ryan in your that makes a lot of, I understand some things now I got you okay I have a lot more compassion on you now Ryan than I used to yeah yeah her husband not her husband yet he's courting her so 24 inches of snow is raining down on top of us my dad makes Gene prove his loyalty to the family and makes him go to Pizza Hut and get pizza for us. Yeah, so he drove. He drove all the way from our house to Pizza Hut and back in a gremlin. Uh-huh. Hold it, hold it. We have this just exactly for that reason. And it don't work. Why don't these work? I guess so. Oh, this has got to be on, don't it? Here we go. Here we go. Check. Here we go. Hand that to her. Amen. Gabapentin was first medicine my doctor put me on, and some people don't can't take it, and I did fine with it, and some some people not everybody's the same. So I'm glad you did. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Just take that and just turn it off there. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to take a turn now uh, in this thing. And... Um, you know, she was saying some medicine's not good, some medicine is good. Uh, God does not condemn medicine. The uh, merry heart doeth good like a medicine, the Bible says. And uh, so anyway, just we praise the Lord for that. Sometimes It is sometimes a matter of getting what, what you are supposed to be on, so appreciate that. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Now we're going to get serious. And during this course, you're going to hear me say quite a bit. I'm going, to, I'm going to repeat myself over and over and over again on this thing. The difference between the real gospel and any fake, false, pretend gospel. Okay? In fact, I'm going to throw it out to you. What is the difference between the real gospel of Jesus Christ and any other gospel that people come up with? What's the difference? It's actually very simple. It's a very easy difference. What is it? Works. Works. 
any other gospel will require a performance, a gift, an offering, something that you must provide so that the blessing, you can earn the blessing of salvation. Something that you must do. Whether it's the priest in the confessional who says, you must confess the sins to me, every one of them, don't leave anything out, and you must then do what I tell you to do, or you will not have your sins forgiven. Okay? That's one version of it. Another version is, you must go to church on Saturday and only on Saturday. If you go on Sunday, you're not saved, you're not going to heaven. That's another one. Uh, another one is, you must speak in unknown tongues, and if you don't, you're not saved, and you're going to hell. That's another one. Um, another one is, you must marry a Mormon woman, be consecrated inside the Mormon temple. You must have on your holy underwear with a square and compass on it. Um, and you must remain married throughout life. The highest divorce rate, now this is, I'm going on 30-year-old information. But at one time, the highest divorce rate in the country was in Utah. State with the highest divorce rate. The reason being, if you were a Mormon, you married a Mormon spouse. If that spouse decided that they didn't want to be Mormon anymore, you divorced them and found another one that was Mormon. Because if you don't, if you and her or you and him do not succeed in dying as a Mormon, you cannot reign as a God over your own planet. That's their version of salvation. They say, as God is, Man will be, and as man is, God once was. That's what they say. They say that God used to be a man on a planet, and he successfully had multiple Mormon wives, and uh, they all, when they, uh, were, when they all died, they were elevated to the status of godhood, assigned their own planet, Earth, and God and his multiple wives procreated and popped out all the children that are on planet Earth, except all the black people. And all the black people were the angels that fell with Lucifer and were cast down to the earth, and therefore they can't go to heaven. Look it up. Look it up. I'm not lying. That was their doctrine for years until it became unpopular. Then the holy prophet of the Mormon church had a revelation. We were wrong. Bunch of liars. Somebody give me another one. Another work that somebody added to the gospel in order to, to so you could be saved yep you must be you must be baptized in their baptistry in their water yeah and none of the old testament applies to them none of it throw it out if they're new testament only and you must be baptized in their water or you're not going to heaven. Okay? Yes? Yep. Guys, if your hair is touching your ears, ladies, if your dress is not touching your knees, you're not saved, you cannot go to heaven. That's, the, that's a fundamentalist version of adding to salvation. It's adding a work of the flesh or the appearance of the flesh in order to please God. There is nothing, nothing that we do that pleases God except our trust and our faith in what he said. Hebrews, 11, Hebrews 12. For without faith it is impossible to please God. Period. Okay? And I ask this question. I, I ask this question in a group of... A church full of preachers, what is it that pleases God? And the, the, several of them said, obedience. Nope. The reason why God has set that aside on our part is that we can't. And we don't. God's version of obedience 
is 100%, you would have to go back in history and not do all the things that you did up until this time and then don't do it ever, don't do any more for the rest of your life. That is God's version of obedience, okay? Man always has a different version. If I do, enough, if I do a lot, then God's gonna, you know, bless me so on. Uh, anybody else? Another version of salvation. Yes? Yeah, that in itself can be immodest, I'll tell you that. Yeah, uh, she used to be Pentecostal church. You're not a Pentecostal. Yeah, oneness, they don't believe in the Godhead. And uh, the dress is everything. If you don't dress the way they tell you to dress, you're, you're not saved, okay? You're not filled with the Spirit, you're not saved, and so on. And so, I mean, all these rules, rules are good, don't get me wrong. Rules, morals, guidelines ways to act, ways not to act, those are all good. Nothing, I don't, don't condemn any of them. But when you place them either on top of the cross or even equal with the cross, you've got a false gospel, period, okay? Bible, we need Bible. 2 Corinthians 11. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus... Whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Three things here. And the culmination of this is they are all tied together. If it is another Jesus, it will be another spirit and it will be another gospel. If it's a different spirit, it will be another Jesus and it will be another gospel. Um, if it's another gospel, it's because it's another spirit and another Jesus. They, you can't have one of this without having the other. So does it make a difference what the Bible says? It does. And does it make a difference if one Bible says one thing completely different than another Bible? Yes, it makes a difference. Without the uh, incorruptible word of God, we would not know the gospel. Because men love to pervert the gospel. That's what men love to do. They do it for money. They do it for power. They do it for whatever they get their kicks from. But men love to pervert the gospel. Turn to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. From a, from a pattern standpoint, an order. I believe in God is in order. And God does things in order. Galatians, and I've, I've said this multiple times. You have a reference in 2 Corinthians to another gospel. That's one. In Galatians chapter 1, you have three more references to it. And then you don't find the phrase, another gospel or any other gospel, mentioned anywhere else in the scripture. You have um, verse 6, Galatians 1, a marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And if I just touch on this for a minute. I, we all know that the first, let's say the first year of someone becoming a new believer in Christ, that first year is absolutely important on how they're going to turn out uh, as far as making sure that they're given the right, uh, the right teaching, the right doctrine, uh, getting their head right, training them right. Because remember, there is a dragon who stands before the woman ready to devour her child as soon as it is born. And as soon as someone is, uh, says they're ready to meet Christ or whatever, as soon as that occurs, that dragon is right there ready to devour that soul, ready to teach them corrupt Bible verses, ready to teach them corrupt doctrines, ready to, teach, ready to uh, impart to them some different spirit than what it was that led them to the cross. Remember, our life is a journey, just like Israel. Israel 
can come out of Egypt and never make it to the promised land. We have a lot of people who at one time in their life came out of Egypt only to either turn back or die in the wilderness. They never make it to the promised land. Many evils befall people. And if you cannot endure the temptation, if you cannot endure the trial, if you cannot endure these things, then you're like the, the seed that brings forth, but it has no root. And as soon as, the, as soon as the heat comes on, as soon as the sun comes out, and there's no rain, because it has no root, it perishes, and it perishes quickly. Now, the older that a plant or a tree gets, the harder it is to starve it out. Why? Roots. It's got a root system that is nothing short of absolutely amazing how deep some tree roots are able to tap into. Hundreds of feet. For some reason, God gave the root of a tree the ability to detect water. I wonder if, I wonder if scientists have ever figured up how many feet of soil a tree can smell water through? Because they can smell water. There's no doubt. Everybody knows that if you got a tree here and a water source 100 yards that way, the tree will always throw its roots in that direction. For some reason, it's able to smell water. Okay? And it'll throw its roots in that direction, just waiting for that to meet wherever the edge of the water seeping into the soil is. That's where they want to get to. Okay? And so the older, that, uh, the older that a tree gets, the older that a plant gets, the older that a convert gets, the harder it is to bring them down. Okay, the harder it is to do it. And so what we see is people coming in, we, we can call them converts in the sense that um, they came, they left Egypt, but... If they're not grounded and rooted and settled in a very short amount of time, the chances are you'll never see them again. And I've, I've been in the ministry long enough to know that's how it works, okay? Paul said, I marvel so that you are so soon removed. Paul said, I just left there. I haven't been gone very long. And now I'm hearing that you already have people coming in. What did Paul, uh, turn to Acts. What did Paul say? Go to Acts chapter. Oh, let's see here. I want to say 26 maybe. Anyway, it was where Paul was, um, he was, telling everybody what was going to happen after he died. He said, I know that after my departure, grievous wolves will come in, not sparing the flock. So Paul knew that right after he left, whether it was he died and went to heaven, or he was ministering someplace, let's say in Ephesus, or let's say in the, in the Gaul area, he, he established some churches up there, and no sooner than Paul left, then automatically grievous wolves moved in. Now here's a good lesson for everybody. Let's say Paul represents the Bible, because the Bible is divided up, prophets in the Old Testament, the apostles in the New Testament, we are built upon the foundation of the prophets and the apostles, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So, um, here's you, and, you know, God works in your life, and boy, you just get excited, and you read the Bible, and you read the Bible, and you read the Bible, and read the Bible, but then, something happens, and now you're not reading the Bible anymore. Now, let's say you, Tuesday, don't read the Bible. Wednesday, you don't read the Bible. Thursday, you don't read the Bible. Friday, you don't read the Bible. How, how many days do you think that the wolves are going to wait in the background until they realize that you're weaponless? That Paul's gone. Paul's your Bible. 
that Paul is gone, you have no weapon, how long do you think wolves, spirits, are going to wait while you're unprotected? Not long. They're going to come in. They're going to come in. They're going to move against you. They're going to do it very quickly. Okay? I've watched enough African safari videos. Okay? The lions and the cheetahs and the leopards and the... Um, the hy I hate hyenas. The hyenas will follow a herd of water buffalo around and just wait. They're very patient. They'll wait and they'll keep their eye on the youngest and the weakest water buffalo in that herd. And the moment that the weakest of them has been separated from the rest of the group, they're not going to wait another day to hope that it stays out a day. The moment that a water buffalo gets pulled away from the rest of the group, they're going to, they're going to be on it. They're going to be right on it. And if that buffalo does not have the ability to get back to the herd in time, they're dead. Those lions, they go, the lions and the cheetahs and the leopards all do the same thing. They go right for the throat. Okay? And they'll suffocate you and eat you dead. Okay? Paul said, I know after my departure, grievous wolves shall enter in, not sparing the flock. And it doesn't take long for that to happen. Does everybody get my gist here? I'm trying to make this as plain and simple for you as possible. So... You didn't read your Bible one day. Read it the next. Don't use an excuse. Well, I didn't read it yesterday, so why should I read it today? Read it. Put Paul back in place. Put the prophets back where they need to be. Get your sword on. Get, get, get in with the rest of the group. Because the moment you separate yourself out of the group, okay, the cloud of witnesses, that's around us. We are compassed with so great cloud of witnesses. All right? So get in with the group. That's what he said. I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you and did the grace of Christ unto another gospel. We're back in Galatians now. Which is not another. Why did he say that? Why did Paul say another gospel, but then he said it's not another gospel? Why did he say that? Huh? Okay, but why did he say the gospel means what? The phrase gospel means what? Good tidings. That's what the angel said. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Okay, so good tidings and that's what the gospel is. So if it's another gospel, it's not good news. It's not good. Because now, you're going to have to cough something up. You're going to have to do something else. You're going to have to add to it in order to attain it. And I'll tell you this. The person that you believed when they told you that you had to add this to the gospel to be saved, will, once you do that, will add something else after you did that. And when will they stop? Never. They will never stop adding things to the gospel. Even if you did everything they told you to do, faithfully, flawlessly, the moment you don't do what they tell you to do, you lost your salvation. There's no, there's no gospel for you. You needed, oh, you did all this. Well, that was great yesterday. What are you doing today? Okay? Because if you're not doing today, if you're not going to do this today, you're obviously not saved. And they're always going to add something else. And then when you do that, they're going to add something else. And when you do that, they're going to add something else. And they just keep piling it on and piling it on and piling it on. There are people who spend their lives searching for the truth. 
and they go from this mystery religion and then they go to this mystery cult and then they don't go to um, this form of magic and then they go and do this kind of um, this kind of sorcery here and then they get into uh, we're gonna take some LSD or we're gonna go down to South America and get us some ayahuasca we're gonna get that in us and it's gonna open up doorways to the to hidden truths of the universe and then we're gonna know it and as soon as that's over with some, there, somebody somewhere is gonna add something else to it it is a constant journey of trying to look for final salvation and they never get it a guy named Bill Schnebelin said he started out I don't remember where exactly he started out but he was simultaneously he was a Mormon a Freemason a practicing witch a practicing vampire practicing vampire he said that the the day before he got saved he said you have no idea what it's like to wake up in the morning craving human blood you know how some of us are going I need coffee okay his wasn't coffee his was human blood and he had people that were part of this with him that would donate blood for him to drink in the morning that's how deep he got but he said he said we're all, he said we're trying to find this holy grail and he said as soon as we go through all the hoops and requirements of one religious cult doctrine thinking that at the end we're gonna find the holy grail all we do all we get is when we get to the end of it we find out that there's a whole new set of mysteries that we didn't even know about now we have to go through all of them to get it and when we get to the end of that we find out then that there's a whole new set of mysteries that we have to go and and achieve and he said everything I did was to place myself higher and higher and higher and higher so that I would finally reach the top and get the Holy Grail this this uh, freedom from all this world freedom from every uh, vile thought freedom from everything and you you achieve the uh, the highness of the universe and he said I was always climbing and never reaching the top always it's like being on an escalator and walking up the steps at the same rate as what the steps are going down you're never gonna reach the top ever and as soon as you speed up somebody's speeding up the escalator never gonna find it never gonna reach it so he went to a bank his bank I don't know how it happened but the bank lady looked at him didn't know him bank lady said I just want you to know I'm praying for you today Jesus loves you she has no idea why she said that he had no idea okay but God used that to set that man free okay you pray for him okay you pray for him I, I'm not gonna speak ill of him I've had conversations with him over some things that he he's getting into he has assured me he still believes King James Bible that's the way it is but just pray for him okay because it's 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 something to finally be set free and then go right back again back into the yoke of bondage okay and I just don't like bondage I don't like somebody being in bondage because it makes me mad because I know somebody else put them there okay and I'm angry at whoever put them there uh, I marvel that you so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another it's not good news if when you finally reach the end you find out that's not the end and you have to keep doing uh, one of the one of the new Bible translations I have yet to figure out which one it is maybe somebody can look it up on blue letter Bible but somebody posted it as a meme on Facebook and it was a Bible verse where the King James says ask and it shall be given seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened okay well here's Jesus he's standing at the door how many times does it take asking Jesus to save you for him to save you How many times does he have to die to save you? 
Okay? So this, trans, this other translation said, keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking. Said it makes me angry. Because it gives this implication that the reason why you didn't get it the first time, you didn't knock hard enough, and you didn't knock long enough. Okay? I don't buy it. Are you kidding me? Slap my mama. Well, don't, because you won't like what you get afterward. Holman Christian Standard and the New King James says it. Let me, let me recertify something to you. The New King James is not the King James. It's not. The reason why they, if, if that's in there, the reason why they did it is that when they, when they, when the guys said, all we're going to do is take the King James, update the language, update the these and thous. That's all we're going to do. That's it. We're not going to touch the rest of it. And they lied. They took hell out 22 times, replaced it with Sheol or, or uh, Hades. Then, according to that, keep seeking, keep knocking, keep asking. That does not come from reading the Textus Receptus. It comes from these other Greek manuscripts Westcott and Hort put out for everybody. So they decided to, got, to go against the Greek manuscripts that the King James is based on and go to these other manuscripts where and their Vatican manuscript now it makes sense doesn't it because the Vatican Church the Roman Catholic Church their whole doctrine of salvation is keep being forgiven keep repenting keep performing and even the priest doesn't believe that the sacrifice of Christ one time is sufficient for you salvation that's why they have to crucify him afresh every time they have the celebration of the mass Well, you're lucky I'm not carrying. So it's not the New King James? Okay. New Living Translation, Holman Christian Standard, Southern Baptist, the Holman, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the one saved, always saved people are saying, keep asking, keep knocking, keep, yeah. It doesn't, doesn't match, does it? So anyway, it's not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. There's some out, there's always some out there that are going to pervert the gospel. Now, there's obvious perversions of it. I mean, totally just obvious. Yeah, that's and it's not hard for us to figure out, okay? But then there's the more subtle more subtle ways of perverting the gospel. And it doesn't matter if it's obvious or subtle, it's still deadly. It'll still kill you. It'll destroy the work of God in you. Okay? Is that the bell? Uh, let's, let's finish Galatians here very quickly. Galatians 1.8 But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. So, it is, it's important on my part that I tell you the right gospel. If I don't, accursed people don't go to heaven. You're cursed. There's only two types of people in the world, cursed and blessed, period. If you're blessed, you have salvation. If you're cursed, you're going to go to hell. So I have, to, I have to bring forth the one and the only true gospel. If I don't, if I pervert that gospel somehow, some way, then not only are those who follow that going to be accursed, I'm accursed for doing it. And I'm just not in the mood to be accursed. Okay? I've been cursed before, cursed at, cursed out, uh, but I'm, I don't want to be accursed 
anymore. Now, let me, I'm going to set, I'm going to set this morning's sermon up, okay, with this. The gospel is free, correct? Free from any kind of financial arrangement or free from any kind of law-keeping arrangement, including being circumcised, okay? Including, quote-unquote, Sabbath-keeping. Who didn't work their normal job yesterday? If you raise your hand, if you did not work your normal routine, paid you paid a salary job yesterday, raise your hand. Okay. Huh? I know you didn't work. Saturday we went to a basketball game. Caleb scored, Caleb scored thirteen points yesterday. His team scored fifteen points. If that tells you something. Anyway. So, if I said to you, I believe you're saved by grace through faith as long as you don't do any work ever on the Sabbath. Is that, is that the gospel? I believe that you're saved by grace as long as you're circumcised. Because circumcision of the flesh. What does the flesh have to do with your salvation? Absolutely nothing. Your flesh, the whole, your whole body needs to be circumcised. Okay? That's the circumcision of the heart. The, the circumcision of the heart is get rid of the flesh. Cast the flesh off. And now you're, now you're everlasting life. Okay? The gospel is supposed to be free from money. So the Catholic Church then sells indulgences, which is... If you committed a transgression, if you paid us 50 bucks, we will say a mass for you and have your sins forgiven. And if you don't pay the 50 bucks, you don't get your sins forgiven. Okay? Well, that hurts all the poor people all over the world because they're constantly trying to raise up enough money to have a mass said. So poor Uncle um, Geraldo does not have to spend eternity in hell or spend a thousand years in purgatory. What I'm saying to you is, how many works does it take or how much money does it take that must be added to salvation in order for, in some people's minds, it to be a different gospel? If I said to you, salvation is absolutely free, well, it does require one penny from everybody. So everybody gives a penny. That's easy, right? But what have I done to the gospel? Uh, I've ruined it. I've ruined the free gospel because if it, even, if, even if it requires a penny, it's still not free. It's still not free. And who can remember a time when your grandparents did not have a penny? That's American history, people. Okay? So it doesn't matter if it's adding a penny, adding $1,000, or adding a million. If somebody doesn't have it, they can't be saved. And all I have to do is add a penny to the price of absolutely free. Then it's no longer. In the eyes of the law, uh, there are certain laws regarding if you got a car from somebody, you either received that car as a gift or you paid for it. If you paid a dollar for a car, in the eyes of the law, you did not receive it as a gift. It is a car that has been bought and paid for. And we, we know this, right? Because we buy a used car from somebody or get it from somebody. We don't want to pay the state sales tax, do we? Come on, let's get honest here. We don't want to pay the sales tax on the car we bought, right? So we say it's a gift. Well, if it's a gift, now there's a gift tax. They're going to tax it as a gift. Well, I bought it then. Okay, how much you pay for it? A dollar. Okay, then we're going we're gonna to charge you tax on a dollar if that's what you paid. But either way, it's either a gift or it costs a dollar. You see the point here? In the eyes of the state of Missouri, there's a difference. So is salvation a gift or does it cost a dollar? And if it's a gift, it cannot cost anything. And if it costs something, even if it's a dollar, it cannot be a gift. Right? Think about that. 
Okay? Think about it. So we're gonna, I'm setting you up for the sermon this morning. Okay? Heavenly Father, we ask for your grace and nothing more. We don't deserve your grace. And Lord, <laughs> paying the price for our sins definitely would cost a lot more than a dollar. Lord, we all owe a debt that we could not in eternity repay. So, Father, you gave us salvation as a gift and nothing else. And I thank you for that because I learned, Lord, that I don't owe you for what you've given me. And in my mind, I'm serving you, Lord, according to the law, not out of debt, but out of free will. And there's a difference. Father, thank you. Thank you for paying that debt. Thank you, Lord, for giving it to me free of charge. I love you, Jesus. And I love this gospel. Help me to preach it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.